was involved, and they were saying this one cost it. Okay. And then uh, all of them signed refusal saying they weren't hurt or nothing like that. Right. And we uh, took the battery cable off this just to secure it, and then we just kind of cleaned it up. So, uh, so that's okay. about where we're at. <laughs> Sounds good. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Hi there. Yeah. He's the driver of this. Right here. Okay. Do you have a driver's license on you? Yes, ma'am, I do. Feeling any injuries or anything? No, not right now. Okay. The drill is still pretty high though. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Alright, were you with him? No, my brother. I was passing by my street. Okay. Alright, All right, so what happened? Well, I was just coming, headed to the airport for my daddy's and got about right there where that white truck's at. And these people uh, in the van here turned across the highway. What nothing I could do. I came over. This uh, gentleman here with the ponytail and glasses was right behind them. And they, uh, I clipped them, they clipped me, however you want to call it. Okay, but, so you, did you, you tried to swerve and miss? Is that what happened? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and you were headed east or west? It was that or T-Bone. Yeah. Uh, I was coming yeah, from this direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thankfully, nobody's hurt. Right. So. Hey, Jeremy, you know, yeah, no, yeah. Where'd that truck? We were, we're just here to make oh, a statement. Yeah. Oh, I thought there was You guys saw the crash? Yeah, yeah we were okay. right behind him. Okay, what, what happened from so your guys? So, the Toyota is in front of him. They're making a left turn. Uh, you know, they either weren't paying attention, probably didn't know where their turn was kind of thing. So, kind of swerving. They go and cut that guy off. You know, he's like right here. So, he swerves almost all the way over into the ditch to miss. Where where was this vehicle? Right here. It was, they were in front of him. They were yeah. right in front of him. And they're they, back there trying to screw they, right here. Trying to make that left okay. turn. Where they and, are uh, now. So they cut him off. So and he, he was swerved, on coming traffic. Yeah, and he swerved almost all the way into the ditch and just barely clipped the front of that car. Okay. They literally just went like yeah. no brakes, nothing. Like yeah. you said they had their blinker on, right? Yeah, they did have their blinker but on. But they just they like just went right, right in front of him. Exactly. He literally was like a wreck that happened and it just happened. It was like, okay. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any do either of you have an ID on? In there? the truck oh wait down there. I got I was driving, I got Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay, what's a good phone number for you? Uh, 706-879-8768. Okay, I appreciate you guys stopping. You're pretty good. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you, too. Hi there. Did the firefighters check you out? Any yeah, injuries? Yeah, just, uh, it's just, uh, being scared, shock yeah. kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, was it just you in the vehicle? Yeah, it was just me. Okay, can you tell me what happened? Uh, I guess they were going to turn, but, you know, I was like, oh, they're going to stop, because I'm, I'm trying to get home and stuff like that. Right, so you were traveling west. So I was, yeah. Correct. And they, uh, they just, uh, they just turned, instead of, like, just slowing down, because I was getting ready for them to slow down, and they kind of had to come over, and I kind of tried to get out of their way, and it just, uh, uh, yeah, collision and all that stuff. Okay, so the other black car, he was coming this way. Yes, yes. And he did he swerve into your lane? Uh, he was avoiding them because uh, they had just pulled right out in front of them. And, right. Uh, I, I slowed down a little bit because I figured they were going to actually stop because there was traffic coming and stuff like that. But uh, they just kind of, you know, they just went on and, and they kind of had to turn. But the the black car went over the yellow line into your lane. Yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah, yeah, they 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 did. Okay. Do you have your driver's license on you? Yes. Have you called for a tow truck? Uh, no, no, I was, uh, uh, I'm not, not very familiar with the procedure here. Okay. So. Let's go over there with you, okay? I hit the signal. I come left. Okay, but you had to yield to oncoming traffic. Because, you know, when I get it, I saw the, the car came, yeah. and they was so speedy, so I had a ton. But they had a behind us, not not front of us. This, this guy already gone. And I come down, it's going this way, and right. already got the signal. No matter, I got a 45 mile. I okay, had but this car that was coming this way, you saw this car coming. 
Yeah. And made your left turn in front yeah. of the car. Yeah, I did. But they have no, I'm turning signal up, and I didn't, I didn't stop it. Right, but you still have to yield to oncoming traffic when but, you're making a turn. Yeah, actually, they came at my speed, and, and I, I had a turning, but they had behind us. They should be, I got a turn left and signal up. They should be obeyed. They should be slowed down, but no, I didn't know. you have to yield to oncoming traffic. But when I stopped, they hit me more words. There are several issues with the way this investigation was handled. Aside from the obvious language barrier that Susie Chang had with her limited English, the officer did not even do a thorough cross-examination of witnesses, and furthermore, she took a testimony from witnesses that were not even present during the time of the accident. The first witness the officer questioned was Vehicle C. Vehicle C alleged that he was traveling west, but he was also traveling east, and Susie was trying to communicate this, but because the officer had already drawn her conclusion, conclusions from the three testimonies, she simply invalidated everything Susie said. Susie was trying to communicate that she did indeed suddenly accelerate because the vehicle headed the opposite direction was going way over the speed limit. As a result, she suddenly accelerated to avoid the oncoming minivan that was headed the opposite direction. Vehicle C was behind Vehicle B and ran into Vehicle B heading east. The evidence and the placement of the vehicles explains it all. Firstly, if Vehicle C was headed west, where are the skid marks? And why was the collision not much worse? Worse. Also, the placement of the accident, according to their testimony, is completely implausible as the collision would have had to have taken place several yards past the intersection, not prior. The fact that the collision is prior to the intersection where this collision took place should only further strengthen that this collision happened while Vehicle C was traveling east and swerved to avoid Vehicle B, but collided with Vehicle B, pushing Vehicle B beyond the intersection and then lost lost control and slid into the driveway. Furthermore, Susie remembers very clearly that the vehicle approaching from the west was specifically a minivan, not vehicle C. Susie was trying to explain that vehicle C was traveling behind her the whole time. She was trying to say that they should have slowed down because she had stopped to turn left. The only reason why she suddenly accelerated was because the minivan approaching from the west was traversing much faster than the allotted speed limit. The minivan passed on without any collision. It was vehicle C that slammed into vehicle B because vehicle C was simply not paying attention. I hope this clears up the fact that the evidence speaks much louder than false testimonies. Hence, this is why Susie said that even a child could surmise this collision happened while traversing east. A collision with vehicle B and C traveling from opposite directions would have been fatal. Lastly, please pay close attention to vehicle B's testimony. It appears that he was coerced to play along with everyone else's story, but when you pay attention to the crucial question of if vehicle C swerved over the double lines, he hesitates and then says yes. So in closing, the third party testimony was not even there. They lied about the accident and most likely is somehow affiliated with vehicle C. Furthermore, investigation of their phone records could likely reveal a phone call that took place prior to this incident. If not, the first friend that stopped for vehicle C could have called in for backup. Either way, everything seems sus about how random witnesses just suddenly appeared out of nowhere. Vehicle B's testimony was very shaky, his body language was very withdrawn, and he seemed very unsure about the events that led up to the accident. Finally, the placement of the vehicles and the testimonies of the five witnesses just don't add up. Susie's story lines up perfectly with the evidence, but it seems that false eyewitness testimonies trump evidence when it's convenient. I would like to say that this smells like a huge racial discrimination case and for whoever reviews this video, please be advised that we are not ignorant and are not going to back down from the truth. I hope this video has thoroughly demonstrated this. Thank you and have a blessed day.